Three Al Jazeera journalists have been convicted in Egypt. <laughs> it's, this is so outrageous. I'm not even quite sure what they've been convicted of. I know technically that it's terrorism-related charges, but they are so ridiculous that it, it's just... It's as if the Egyptian prosecutors weren't really trying. It was as if they were sending the world a message. We don't give a damn. We're going to put journalists in jail if you oppose this government. And uh, we're against Al Jazeera because they're from Qatar, and we uh, think that they're with Muslim Brotherhood, and evidence be damned. One of the pieces of evidence that they claimed to use was, oh, one of the producers, uh, he had ammunition with him. It was a spent shell casing that he had picked up from the ground as a souvenir as he's reporting it. Ah, ammunition, that's it. He got three extra years for that. Three uh, journalists were given uh, seven years in prison. There were 17 co-defendants in the case overall, 14 other co-defendants, eight tried in absentia, and they each received 10 years in prison uh, as well. The three you're looking at there are the ones that were uh, held in prison, got convicted, and are in Egypt being held right now. One is the guy in the middle, obviously, is the Australian, Peter Gerst. He's an award-winning journalist. Um, and there's Canadian Egyptian Mohamed Fahmi and Egyptian Bahar Mohamed. And uh, look at the cages they put them in. I mean, they've already spent a great deal of time in prison. Now people cannot believe it, but they're supposed to spend seven more years in prison. Uh, Gerst um, just uh, raised his hand in, in, a, in a fist uh, silently uh, when the verdicts were read out loud. The family members couldn't believe what had happened. It's an obvious travesty of justice. Uh, now let me show you what a travesty it is. First of all, we go to Amnesty International. They followed the case meticulously. Here are their conclusions. Uh, the trial was, quote, a complete sham. Uh, they, I'm going to go on to prove it in a second. Uh, they also said it's a dark day for media freedom in Egypt, and I believe that's exactly what the Egyptian government was trying to do. They were trying to send a message, don't cross us. It, it is a dark day for media in Egypt. And if you report things that are true, that we do not like, it'll be a dark day for you. And uh, Philip Luther from Amnesty International went on to say, consigning these men to years in prison and for such a farcical spectacle is a travesty of justice. He also said the prosecution failed to produce a single shred of solid evidence linking the journalists to a terrorism organization or proving they had falsified news footage. Now, in the beginning, the prosecution promised to do just that. They said, oh, they falsified the footage. These aren't real journalists. They're trying to do uh, propaganda for their uh, government in Qatar. First of all, if, even if that was true, which in this case it clearly is not, okay, and I'll show you why in a second. Even if it was true, they're biased, they said. I mean, in a country that is free, you can be biased all you like. Democratic presidents don't put Fox News anchors in jail. Republican presidents don't put MSNBC hosts in jail, right? Now, I know Egypt isn't the United States of America, and obviously they have different constitution, but this is beyond all bounds of reason. I think they were trying to be unreasonable on purpose to show people we don't give a damn about the rule of law. We're in charge now, and if you don't do exactly what we tell you to, we're gonna put you in prison, evidence be damned. So, speaking of which, the prosecutors say in the beginning, we're going to show you how they uh, had fake footage of the protest that made the Egyptian government look bad. Okay, interesting. Now I quote the Associated Press. Instead, they presented some footage showing clashes between pro-Morsi protesters and police, but without any indication that it was falsified. Mostly, they presented random video clips also found on the three that had nothing to do with the case including a report on a veterinary hospital in Cairo, another on Christian life in Egypt, and old fitted footage of Grest from previous assignments elsewhere in Africa, including video of animals. Hmm, wow, you really got them. They say, we're gonna show you how it's falsified. Okay, we're not gonna show you that at all. Instead, we're gonna show you cute uh, videos of cubs uh, in the wild in Africa. Look at that, isn't that amazing? Ha <laughs> ha! And then they presented uh, to the court, and the court goes, oh, yeah, mm, yeah, mm. Obviously guilty. So obviously today there's no justice in Egypt, uh, and unfortunately there's no free press in Egypt as well. Uh, this sends a chilling message, because it's supposed to. It also tells us what the Egyptian government is actually up to, and it certainly ain't democracy.